welcome to Mark Killen's channel. We are talking balafon on this episode. This is an African instrument, mostly West African. We're talking Mali, Burkina Faso, Gambia, Ghana, Senegal, Ivory Coast. That whole area is grand central for the balafon. However, as African instruments go, these instruments have a very impressive historical legacy and a very well documented one at that. We can trace this instrument back to the 12th century, 13th century, and it is very much tied to the formation of the Mali Empire. So Sunjata Keita was the prince um, or the monarch of the Malinka people, and it is he and his family who founded the empire of the Mali people. Now the story goes that the first balafon was given to him by a spirit. And the balafon is seen as a magical instrument that possesses a spirit itself. Sunjata Keita died in 1255. It is really he who is known as the godfather of this instrument. It is also known as a court instrument in the sense that it was used as a praise instrument for members of the court. Now the griots were praise singers who served the court and they were entrusted with the guardianship of this instrument. And that exists to this day. In fact, a family called the Koyare family, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, are still seen as the guardians of the balafon. And Bala Koyare is seen as one of the greatest proponents and players of this instrument. And he can directly trace his lineage all the way back to the family of griots that served um, in the court of Sanjita Keita in the 13th century. Now, the name itself is balafon, but it comes from the word bala. And a bala is traditionally what this instrument was called. Fon is the Greek word to speak or to make a sound. So balafon is how we came up with the name. And this developed into the modern day xylophone. A xylophone is something you will find in any classical orchestra. And this is the grandfather of the xylophone. Now the balafon usually is not chromatic. Um, and that is one of the big differences between the balafon and the xylophone. The balafon will be pentatonic. Balafons usually have uh, many more notes than this. This only has 12. Usually you're going to find 17 to 22 uh, and maybe even beyond that. Now this balafon here, unfortunately not a very good balafon. It has a really weird tuning. It's not really that playable. You can kind of do cool things with it, but it's very difficult to play this instrument along with anything else. This one is C. D, F, G, A, C, D-ish, E, G, A, C-ish, and D. So it's really all over the place. still have fun with it. Now I don't remember where I got this one here somewhere in Los Angeles but it is most likely coming from West Africa somewhere. The wood from these things is usually made from rosewood or some other type of hardwood. Um, it is bound together usually by tendons, animal tendons um, and sometimes more modern versions of rope or nylon or what have you. And they have um, a series of calabashes underneath. If you can see here each calabash is situated under a note and the calabash has an opening and so the note has a chance to resonate through this using this body to amplify it. In some cases the calabash will also have another hole somewhere that is covered by cigarette paper or traditionally spider web or something like that that also gives it a bit of a buzzing type of sound. This one doesn't have that. Now this is a much more palatable instrument. I love this instrument. This is a balafon from Mali, but it is different. It is not traditional in the sense that it is made from metal. The bars here are made from metal. They also have calabashes underneath, uh, but what's different, these calabashes do have that little hole covered with, uh, in this case, it's just um, very thin plastic, um, and that's what gives it its buzz. That is called the Merliton effect. Now this one is perfectly in tune. It is a pentatonic. It's a pleasure to play. And it's, uh, well, let me show you the, the notes here. Starting out with a low D, we've got F, we got G, B flat, C, D, F, G, B flat, C, 
D, F, G, B flat, and C. So it's really a pleasure to play. You can play it in B flat. minor just love that buzz or you can play it in D minor a lot of mileage out of just a simple pentatonic scale and you can even play it with your fingers. So there are a couple of players to go and check out. Um, Bala Koyada as I've already mentioned, Ali Keita, Mamadou Djibati, Morikante, um, there are a whole host of great players coming from that part of the world, from West Africa, um, that you just absolutely have to check out. And there's even a geezer from Germany by the name of Gert Killian. I shit you not. This is very much a group instrument as well, not just a solo instrument. So you will find very often three players together with three different sizes of bellophones playing together. And it's extremely complex and satisfying music to watch. Also, go and check out the history. I've probably muddled my way through it, and you will find that whatever book you read, um, you're gonna find a slightly different representation of how it all went down and all the history behind it. Um, but it's all fascinating stuff. So this is not a comprehensive episode on the Bellophon by any means. I am just basically showcasing how I use it and the Bellophon that I have, which is a metal Bellophon, not even traditional. But I hope this makes you interested in this instrument and for you to go and start researching this instrument yourself uh, and maybe even at some point picking one up for yourself. They are super fun instruments, um, not difficult to learn, but very difficult to master. And it is a fascinating history that a lot of people in the West don't even know about. So thanks for watching this episode on the Balafon. Don't ever stop learning and get your Balafon on. Alle passagiers gaan asjeblief naar hek nummer 2.